Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're going to be taking a look at a keyboard that I think it's about a year or so that it came out. I do remember when they had the Kickstarter for it. It's the NT68. Um, Epo Maker sells it, but obviously Skyloon is the uh, manufacturer. Now, I would assume that a lot of folks that are probably watching have had at least one Skyloon board. I know I have probably half a dozen <laughs> that I've used because they've been, for the most part, especially when they go on sale, very affordable. I mean, I know I got some GK61s uh, a while ago, but they were like $22 or $27, I think, each when they regularly sell for 63 or 67. Um, so today we're taking a look at this one. This one was really geared towards um, I think being mobile, mobile workstation, working with either your tablet or your cell phone. But it's a 65% wireless that comes with a magnetic portable holder. So basically it has one of those flaps, kind of like on the, the Surface, Microsoft Surface, Microsoft Surface, so it can actually hold your tablet or your phone at an angle so you can uh, use it to work with it. Um, it does have, a, I guess, a Mac mode or or it says Mac version versus Win version. I'm guessing this is the same. This is an NT68M RGB USB plus Bluetooth 2 mode. Okay, so it's Bluetooth and doesn't say 2.4. Before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what we get in the box. Uh, we get a, oh, huh, quite interesting. We actually get two cables. Uh, one is directly a C to C with a corner, I mean with an angled end on one end, uh, so I'm going to assume the connector is probably on the side, and this is just a really short USB-C to USB-C with an a adapter on the end. Okay, that's interesting. All right, and we do seem to have, um, like Keychron does, when you buy their sets, they come with both the Windows and the uh, Mac modifiers. So these are the uh, these appear to be the uh, Mac modifiers. We got a couple of uh, switches. Now. I don't recall what switches I'm, I actually got in this. Oh, these are they're actually Skyloom. They're browns. They feel like a brown, though they have a pink housing. It's a very slight. Uh, tactile event on them. So just out of curiosity. Alright, we got a plastic keycap puller, which you shouldn't use, and the horseshoe uh, switch puller. Alright, so once we uh, unpack this NT68, we find it comes in a, a fabric type. It doesn't quite feel like felt, but it's, uh, it's pretty soft. Alright, this magnet's actually pretty strong. Alright, uh, flip it out and down. So this is where we have the ability to use a say. Hmm. So that's I mean that's a pretty cool little addition, I gotta say. Now is it worth it being a little bit more? Hmm. I don't know. Now let me see. This is it does feel like aluminum. Now it's just held on to this button. Yep. All right. That's all there about magnets. All right. The bottom is definitely plastic, but that, despite being thin, does feel like an aluminum frame. Now just to be sure. Yep. We are running those chocolate rows. I guess I should have paid more attention. Now, this has a, what is it, modern Dolch, I think. Um, it's kind of, or also 9009 or 8008. I, I forget. There are so many keycap sets out there. So, we're looking at a pretty lightweight, despite it being metal, 65%. Um, nothing exploded. No WKL. Uh, we got the 
I don't, I don't know how it works at a, as a function and a menu key at the same time, but that's what it says. Oh, wait a minute, no. Ah, okay, this is your secondary. Your primary function is over here. Now, that I... Huh, I'm going to say that's probably going to have a, a lot of people a little miffed. Um, but this has F and X. So I'm going to say that it probably has the ability to, to either flip this to the primary uh, function modifier or just remap to this one. I don't know. Because having the function key here, no. That's the wrong spot for it. Like, don't just go moving keys around and thinking that it's going to be okay there. But, yeah, I can't. I can't see. I, I would constantly be using that as the Windows key. Because uh, I'm too used to it. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Let's see what it looks like. So we have a, a deck-like style, and oh, there's no uh, there's no feet. So we're only going to have one typing angle here. But I think the big seller on this is the fact that it has this. Uh, I mean, it looks like it'll even. Oh. It's, should support a laptop at an angle and then you just put this over the laptop or like I did the phone so basically this it has several different ways it can go but yeah it does have magnets right there so putting up a phone So, I mean, this is obviously for somebody on the so, go. Yeah, so looking at it, we have a, um, a pretty, uh, I mean, it's it's not ugly. It's a nice floating design, but it's also, I don't know, uh, kind of plain. And despite it having that metal, it still feels quite light. There's some hollowness in there, not much. If we pull off. Let's see what we got here. All right. So yeah, we got no padding. It doesn't look like. Yep. All right. So for this being uh, supposedly a more premium keyboard it has it doesn't look like it has any case foam at all because I can see the bottom of the case and it has no uh, plate to PCB padding so this top case is serving as both the plate and the top of the case so yeah that's um kind of unfortunate but it's probably what's making for that hollow sound. I mean, a little bit of dampening would have made a huge difference for this keyboard stock. So, <clears throat> Alright, let's get technical. Now this is the NT68M. It's a 65% 68 key um, keyboard with one minor change here. The function key the primary function key is in place where usually there would be a super key. Um, it has a 5.5 uh, degree typing angle. It doesn't have any feet, so that's the only typing angle you're going to get. The uh, chin of the keyboard sits at 15.5 millimeters, while the back sits at 18 millimeters. Now, this retails for $74.99 um, with the stand or shroud. With the without the shroud, this keyboard comes in at 623 grams, 653 with the stand. It has a 1900 milliamp hour battery, and it comes stock with PBT GSA keycaps, which are basically a little bit of a taller XDA as they're uniform going across the board. So while it is not a bad looking keyboard, um, being that it retails for 
bucks. Uh, although this one I did get at 60 right now. I guess they're having the sale. They have a $15 off coupon. So I was able to get this on Amazon for $60, which even at that price, I, I would personally have trouble with the function key. A, the switches here aren't awful. They're like regular browns. They're a little bit better. Um, so it looks like we have a, a great little unit kit for being on the go. I mean, yes, I, I can't say, you know, the presentation of this isn't nice uh, to be able to pop it out and especially how they show it um, you using this as the stand for the laptop to be at an angle and then just covering the laptop keys uh, with this, you know, with the keyboard itself. But at least being able to, um, you know, go be a road warrior. The only thing is, is that I think people are gonna have a hard time getting used to that function key. Now, the stabilizers on here are actually pretty good uh, stock. They're not perfect, they could use a little bit of tuning but they sound better than most. Problem is, is because there's absolutely no dampening inside of this keyboard, it it, it rings hollow. I mean, it really does. Um, it, there's not much spin because these these switches seem to be, I don't think they are uh, pre-looped, but they have very minimal, if any, ping at all. Um, these brown sky looping switches with almost clear housing. I, like I think they're called rose chocolates or pink chocolate. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look it up. Anyway, if they would have, for the price that they're selling it at, in my opinion, had they added um, some actual padding, uh, something for the bottom, you know, below the PCB and something between the PCB and the plate, which in this situation, the plate and the top case are one and the same. I think that would have made the biggest difference in the world and would have made for what I think would have been a better stock sound test but overall I mean if you're on the road and you think you can get used to you know if you don't but the thing is you know we're looking at 65% so if you need to use function keys which they're there for a reason a lot of people do people are gonna probably be used to going over here now I'd have to take a look at the software but this one does say function X it may be a secondary modifier I know in the past Skylink software has not been the best so I'm not going to assume too much from it if I come back to this keyboard to, to mod it then I'll take a look at the software and see if it has that capability because I mean just because it's on the key doesn't mean anything but since they put the keys on it I don't know it, 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 it might have that possibility. Anyway, for the price, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's nice, but I would have to mod it to use it. And at this price, I would expect at least, you know, the minimum to be in there. Because if it had dampening, I mean, I could probably just lube the switches, change the keycaps, and I'd be good to go. Now again, that function key, that's gonna mess with me. And especially the fact that usually on the left side of the keyboard, for any pro or any Pretty much any layout not all of them but pretty much any layout they're going to have the 1.25 um, keys like this one but they have the one u keys over here but the 1.25 is on the right side of the space bar so it is a bit of a funky layout funky fun, funky um rest of development um funk so it does have a bit of a odd layout and i think that for anyone that is a road warrior they're going to need those extra keys that are not on here and it's going to take some time getting used to it and if you you know only use this for say being on the road and you have a actual you know 65 percent at home then you're going to have to which keyboard am i on so i think that on its own kind of detracts from this keyboard almost completely because i mean why is a manufacturer just deciding hey let's go ahead and just mess with the layout it's like now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of designers or, you know, different type keyboards that they have, you know, different navigation clusters on this side, which is fine because that's where usually the space is taken away or saved, whether it be the function row and or navigation row or arrow keys. But anything that's part of what I would say the core of the keyboard, you can't be changing that up 
just deciding to create a new layout on your own i mean unless it makes sense you know and it doesn't detract from using other keyboards that you use because that that would be my whole thing i don't see myself using this keyboard because i'd be constantly going over here for the function key going over here for the super key so i would probably end up spending more time using you know or doing whatever i'm doing so being less productive so which when you're on the road you got to be as productive as you can because you're dealing with battery and again we have a less than 2000 milliamp hour battery 1900 milliamp hours with rgb i mean even if you turn the rgb off you're still i mean bluetooth uses battery power you're gonna need to charge up i don't think this is gonna last very long so being a road warrior keyboard i would have said if i was the designer i would have put a minimum of 4000 milliamp hour battery in here minimum um so again i didn't design it so these are my thoughts on the nt68 it was kind of kind of like what i thought that's why i didn't buy it when it was on kickstarter i've seen it on sale a few times but finally it came across i was like yeah it's a good price because i think it was retailing for 99 before if i'm not mistaken even the kickstarter it was like 99 but so got it at 60 i thought it was good but even at 60 i don't think personally that it's a good value it's almost there now if this was more like 40 okay i'd put the time and effort into it and i think that you know maybe i'd you know deal with that but that honestly it's, it's just kind of deal breaker to me yeah you, they made changes over here and this change is just not it's like uh, another keyboard the sick keyb kb1 i think that had the um this was actually the function key and then it had the control so and that one i could not get used to i just couldn't i loved the way it looked but i couldn't get used to it so anyway uh, that's enough of me <laughs> ranting about this keyboard what are your thoughts on it i'd love to hear in the comments below thanks for watching i'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the nt68 and until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on